Hi, my name's Bill Jeffway. I'm the director of the Dutchess County Historical Society. The woman featured in our exhibition, Caroline Klaus, excelled in a field at a time where artistic and commercial success was reserved for men. Born in 1838 and only 13 years old when she received her first drawing books as a Christmas present at her LaGrange home. Two decades later, she was internationally recognized by being one of only a handful of women whose work was featured at the most coveted gallery wall at the U.S. Centennial Exhibition. Critics today call her technical skill unparalleled for the time. How do such talented individuals emerge? Why do some talented artists maintain a reputation while others, like Caroline, are allowed to fade away? With a collection the size and scope of the Caroline Klaus collection, through four chapters, designed so you can take a quick look or a deep breathe, we believe you'll come to appreciate not just her work, but the larger story of a woman's ambition in a field of work men preferred to keep to themselves. A few examples follow. Women at the time might politely draw, but should not try to be a commercial or public success. That was man's work. In Caroline's purse is an 1881 letter to the editor, where a woman rebukes the assertion of a man's recent talk, where he insisted biblical instruction called for women to be subservient to men. Caroline underlined the words, the common sense of the century affirms that woman's place is the one that she can fill. Lydia Klaus, the slightly older sister of Caroline, writes to Caroline on the topic of marriage. You say you're wedded to your easel. What do you intend doing when you make yourself mistress to it? Lydia ultimately concedes the larger point, referencing Caroline's turning down a suitor by writing, if you don't like him, and don't think he nor anyone else will take the place of your easel, why, of course, I'll make the best of the least. Caroline's father's mind was filled with what the family called notions. He lobbied anyone who would listen through every means possible to embrace what he called apographia numbers, numeric patterns in the Bible that he alone could see that would transform how we live if we use them to guide our decisions, including timekeeping. Caroline's work appears to be at the other end of the spectrum, qualitative, natural, feeling not numeric. And yet when you look at her books, sketches and notes, you see a good deal of science and quantitative analysis related to the location of the sun, shading and coloring. In 1850, in their early teenage years, Caroline and her sister Lydia, who was two years older, left their father in remote Sullivan County to be raised by extended family. Lydia relocated to family in Virginia, writing to Caroline as the Civil War came increasingly into view that she lived between Washington, D.C. and Richmond, a city she frequently visited which would be completely destroyed by the end of the war. Lydia wrote that she grieves over the election of Lincoln. She learned to use a revolver and load a double-barrel shotgun. At the same time, by contrast, Caroline moved to her late mother's brother's home in LaGrange, Dutchess County, a county that lost many to the deadly war, but was geographically distant from fighting, allowing Caroline to continue lessons from the highly regarded French artist Frederick Rondell, who had been attracted to Poughkeepsie, then known as the City of Schools. In Caroline's great work, life, legacy, and example, if we listen, what do we learn? How does a great talent from a small farm come to be internationally recognized? Why do some persist against all odds and countervailing forces to make their dreams come true? Who's worth remembering? Who's allowed to fade away? We believe Caroline Morgan Claus is worth rediscovering and is a legacy worth maintaining for all to see. We hope you'll agree. Please post your comments and questions. Enjoy.